This young fellow's name is Truy. Starting work as a cleaner. Starting as a cleaner, are you, lad? Yes, sir. Leave him in the industry shawl. I'll look after him. That's it. We'll go to the store now, lad, and get you some overalls and clothes. By the way, lad, have you got your rule book? Yes, sir. There it is. That's it. You can't go very far without the rule. Arthur! Truin, this is the chargeman cleaner. He'll tell you what to do. Arthur, I want you to get a set of men on 4237 for me. Righto. Come on, boy. Have you got your old book? Yes, sir. You know what to do with it? Yes, sir. Learn it. That's right. Learn it. Harry has started on the first stage of his career. From now until his working life is finished, he will be concerned with locomotives. Locomotives of all kinds and sizes. Tank engines and tender engines, sturdy little shunters and giant expresses, heavy freighters and lighter passenger locomotives. Better get on the chimney, young Harry. Right. Outside and inside mine. Harry's job as a cleaner is an essential preliminary to his career as a driver. As he goes about his work in the locomotive depot, he's learning all the time. He becomes familiar with the parts of a locomotive, learns their names and how they work. He gets to know the controls in the cab and what their functions are. Harry gradually gains in confidence and experience. He finds the work hard but interesting. Although Harry doesn't think of it in that way, he's one of the backroom boys, whose job it is to keep the 8,000 locomotives of the LMS in good running order. Besides cleaners, the shed staff includes fitters, boiler smiths, steam raisers, laborers, boiler washers, firing instructors, and so on. Harry comes in contact with them all. If he's wise, he learns something from them all too. There are 200 motive power depots of various sizes on the LMS system. Day and night, year in and year out, locomotives are moving into and out of the sheds. Constantly, the job of cleaning, inspection and repairing goes on, a vital part of the behind the scene service, which makes railway travel the safest and most dependable form of transport in the world. At the locomotive depot, there are classes, called mutual improvement classes, which Harry should attend. Here he will add theory to the practical knowledge he gains at his work. At first, it all seems very complicated. But soon, the combination of practical experience and theoretical instruction produce their results. Harry is learning. More, he is becoming interested in what he is learning. He isn't content just to listen, he asks questions. Good 
Good morning, Trent. Good morning, sir. You're 18 now, aren't you, Trent? Yes, sir. 18 last month. We shall want you to do some firing soon. Do you think you'll be all right? I shouldn't wonder, sir. I hope so. Well, you realise what we want you to know, Trent. General knowledge of the rules and regulations, especially those referring to hand and fix signals. To describe the various parts of the engine, knowledge of the locomotive's equipment and the proper method of firing. Yes, sir. Right. I'll see you on Monday at 10 and find out how much you know. Right, that's all, Good morning, sir. Oi, Harry, farmer wants you. Harry, I want you to go fire on it in 7264. George Blake's gun thing. Right. Give us a bucket of tools and a shovel. Number four. Dig in the garden, of course. What engine number four? 7264. Thank you. Did you know we're firing our first engine? Yeah, it's our nicest spot, ain't it? Having passed satisfactorily his eyesight test, Harry gets his first job of firing. On the footplate, the driver and fireman work as a team, whether their locomotive is a humble shunter or a mainline express. Harry's chief responsibility, while he's acting as a fireman, is to maintain a good head of steam with a minimum amount of coal. This means that he must give careful attention to the fire. He must, too, regulate the supply of water to the boiler. He sees that right headlamps are exhibited on the locomotive. He assists the driver in keeping a good lookout and, when necessary, operates the water pickup apparatus and the handbrake. Here now is where Harry's training and experience start to show results. He has progressed to the first stage in his career as a driver. As a past cleaner, Harry will not be on regular firing work, but will be available to carry out a fireman's duties as and when required. Harry and his driver prepare the engine for the day's work. I'm feeling a bit nervous now. Oh, well, just a little bit. Never mind, I'll help you all I can. And that is typical of the men of the motive power depots, ready at all times to give valuable help and advice to the learner. It is now that Harry's knowledge of the rules and regulations stand him in good stead. This code of rules governs service in the railway and the operation of trains. Harry must know his rule book thoroughly, for on it depends the safe operation of the line. Every so often he will be seen by a firing instructor to make sure that his knowledge of it is still fresh. Harry soon progresses from shunting engines to runs with local freight trains. During his early trips, he will be accompanied by a firing instructor. There is an art in firing a locomotive furnace correctly, and it's no easy task to put each shovelful of coal through the small fire hole door exactly where it is wanted. The coal must be spread evenly over the whole surface of the grate to obtain the maximum benefit from it. Throughout his career, this system of providing practical demonstration by expert instructors will be followed. Coupled with the facilities available for theoretical work, it provides a sound, basic training which has been shown by experience to produce a steady, reliable and efficient type of man as you will find anywhere. Harry, at this stage of his career, leads a hybrid sort of existence. Sometimes out on the road as a fireman, sometimes in the shed cleaning engines or doing one of the 101 jobs that require to be done.
the trips that Harry takes on freight trains take him further and further from his home station. Every driver must know the road over which he travels. Harry's firing trips enable him to learn the road against the time when he becomes a driver. He must know the location of signals so that he can pick them out easily by day or night, obtain knowledge of speed restrictions where water troughs are located, must in fact know the line over which he travels as you know the street in which you live. Whether he's on the line or working in the depot, Harry is learning all the time. Harry! You're doing a regular firing job next week. Ask him in the office when you to see the doctor. Good, that's fine. It's goodbye now to cleaning for Harry. As a regular fireman, his shed work in the depot is over. But he still has much to learn, and all the time he attends classes and studies at home so that he can pass the examination which will enable him to reach the goal of his ambition and become a driver. His experience broadens. He fires on differing types of freight trains and becomes familiar with differing types of locomotives. His work takes him for longer runs, and he learns the road on new stretches of line. He has become a permanent member of one of that most responsible class, the men of the locomotive footplate. You're a lucky employer, Jim. You're going to start driving, aren't you? Yes, that's right. But you're not doing so badly, Harry. Remember, I'm a good few years older than you. Just as Harry Truin is typical of the men who join the railway as cleaners, Jim Hawkins is typical of those in the next stage of a footplate man's career. Jim is a regular fireman. He is undergoing an examination to become a past fireman, which means that he will be available for driving as and when required. He must be able to name the parts of a locomotive and describe their functions, know how to make and use trimmings, be able to spot where repairs are required and to report them accurately. The examination is a searching one. The inspector, who is actually in charge of the locomotive, takes Jim with him on the footplate. Among the points on which he will have to satisfy his examiner are such things as the care and manipulation of the locomotive, attention to signals, judging distances, and attention to boiler and fire. The test will take place on both passenger and freight trains. To become a past fireman, Jim has to satisfy his examiner that he is capable and efficient. As a fireman, Jim has always had his driver to rely on. When he drives, he will be the man in sole charge of the locomotive. This examination is the most difficult and crucial of his career. The demands are exacting, as indeed they must be, for the safe working of the railway is involved. The inspector notes Jim's actions asks questions, watches for any errors he makes. Now, Jim, what are your chief duties when working a train? Observe and obey all signals. What should you specially examine with regards to coal on tender and fire lines before leaving the local? See the coal is safe and the fire lines secure. Right. What is the correct amount of vacuum that should be created on the vacuum gauge, Jim? 21 inches. Right. What are your duties so far as coal consumption is concerned? Avoid making unnecessary smoke and, uh, yes, and blowing off. Right. Theory is not omitted. The rules and regulations, which have been Jim's constant companion since he started work as a cleaner, have now become of supreme importance. He must know them thoroughly, and particularly those that have reference to the operation of trains. Past fireman Jim Hawkins has officially handed his own copies of instructions connected with his work as a driver. He must too sign the route card to show which routes he knows, experience which he has gained during his career as a fireman. No driver is allowed on the line until he has signed a road card covering the routes with which he is familiar.
Jim is no stranger to the footplate. As successively a cleaner, past cleaner and fireman, his whole working life has been centred round locomotives. The system of training men for the footplate has been carefully devised to ensure that nothing is lacking, either in practical working experience or in theoretical training. Different classes of locomotives are designed to haul particular types of trains. So, as time goes on, Jim handles an increasing variety of locomotives and trains. He becomes a regular driver. At stated intervals, all drivers have to pass tests in the rules and regulations. Their knowledge of them is never allowed to get stale. In his off-duty periods, Jim studies, so that his knowledge will keep fresh. Jim is switched from driving freight trains to passenger train working as circumstances require. He has developed into a good, steady and responsible type of driver. The slower schedules of freight working are mixed with the faster, more exacting schedules of passenger train running. Jim Hawkins is now firmly established in his career as a driver. 